from New Jersey is recognized for three minutes. Mr. Speaker, I thank the chairman of the committee. When Congress passed this bill last year, I lauded several of its features, provisions aimed at attracting and retaining people with good foreign language capability and understanding of foreign cultures, a provision bringing speed to security clearance processes for new hires, the provision directing the national uh, the Director of National Intelligence to establish a multi-level security clearance process, provision requiring the Inspector General to review all covert action programs, and a number of other things. Getting these things right is critically important because intelligence is among the most important functions of our government. A good intelligence system can save lives by preventing war, or should war come, by helping to win the war as quickly as possible. But a flawed intelligence system can be dangerous, as when intelligence is manipulated so as to take America to war under false pretenses, or when fearsome powers of the government are turned on its own citizens without checks and balances. Indeed, it's because this president opposes checks and balances on our intelligence system that we're forced to have this veto override today. Let's be clear. American personnel, civilian or military, should never engage in interrogation practices that amount to torture. The provision the president objects to would simply put the entire U.S. government under one standard for interrogating detainees, the Army Field Manual. The heads of the Defense Intelligence Agency and the FBI have testified that the non-torture guidelines in this bill are adequate for their people to follow in interrogation of dangerous people. If the president were serious about restoring our reputation in the world and about providing moral and legal clarity for all government employees involved in the handing, handling or interrogation of detainees, he would never have vetoed this bill. Providing that moral and legal clarity is our constitutional obligation. And to that end, I urge my, urge my colleagues to join me in voting to override the president's veto. And I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlemen,